Um, Dr. Miller, um, first, you already know I'm a bit of a fan of what you do and the way you think. Um, can you play a game with me instead of just reading a, a written question here? Um, I come to you, you get to use the full power of what you believe exists today and is going to exist over the next year. How could you revolutionize medicine? How could you revolutionize the cost? How could you revolutionize making people well and the morality of ending and, and providing cures? A couple answers. One, if you had high blood pressure, we have software that could titrate the medications for you. You could do that at home. You could send me a message. I could talk with you about exercise. And in fact, software, in theory, could titrate lots of medications for lots of common conditions. You wouldn't even have to necessarily leave your house to see me. In fact, a lot of the time, you might not even need to see me. And then see me for acute concerns. You could automatically have your clinical preventive services ordered. Right? You could have your colonoscopy ordered. Uh, if relevant, a PSA to check for prostate cancer. So a lot of care could occur not just outside the walls of the clinic, but also even outside needing to see a physician. And then let's say you had a condition and you had to do a prior authorization, which my colleagues and I don't particularly enjoy doing. Imagine if the first layer of approval, a review and then approval were automated and in near real time. You know, we have that piece of legislation. <laughs> so, um, uh, uh, Doctor, it, it, within that, that scope, um, you have the data off my wearables, my breath biopsy, whatever it may be. Um, do you see a world, at least at the basic level, um, the AI and then the algorithm that's attached to it could write the script? Absolutely. And, okay. That, that, was, that was clean without a whole lot of struggle. Um, um, Dr. Howard, uh, this is a little bit different, but um, in, 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 and you need to correct me because I was listening to your, dis your discussion about, um, okay, we need more people of variety who are writing AI and code. But in some ways, uh, maybe I have the utopian vision of it provides access for more people to be able to technology. Most people have no idea how to write an app, but they can use the app to do techno technical jobs. Is there in some ways that, yes, there may be this hierarchy of here's over here, my people writing code, doing those things, but over here, isn't this an empowerment for almost every American to do things that are much more complex? Yeah, it is. So when I define AI literacy, it's not about creating computer scientists or coders. It's about making every citizen understand how to interact with AI to do their jobs better. Okay. So it's allowing doctors to basically talk in their phone and it transcribe it into the actual records that can then be shared with other doctors. Okay, so that's, that's really a, about it. That's a much more elegant <laughs> way to phrase it. Uh, Ms. Thier, um, what's my GDP growth? What's my... Um, I have a personal fixation on where we are demographically as a country. We're getting old very fast. We often don't want to talk about it. The, we have to be brutally honest, 100% of the calculated future debt for the next 30 years. Interest, healthcare costs, and if a decade from now we backfill Social Security. It's demographics. What is your vision of AI, the growth, the labor substitution? Does it save us? Yeah, well, I Nothing can save us, but it, it, it can certainly make a major contribution towards the, 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 the betterment of our government processes and potentially our debt. Uh, there's been various estimates, Congressman, on exactly how much uh, AI could contribute to overall gross domestic product, uh, the, the low end being something like at least 1.2 percent annually, but it goes up from there with uh, one forecast for 15 But I beg you would be slightly louder. Uh, one one point two percent annually GDP uh, boost and fifteen point seven trillion potential contribution to global economy by twenty thirty, according to another report. I have all this data in a supplement to my testimony, uh, and again the, the the estimates vary widely. But the bottom line is that almost all economists, political scientists, and consultancies realize that this is a great uh, you know opportunity to once again build digital technology companies in the world by. our American technology right.